Hey guys, Seneca here from Current Automotive. Uh, this year we're gonna do a lot more content on all the vehicles we carry here. And uh, I thought, why not get started with one of the first cars Tesla made, the Tesla Roadster. The Tesla Roadster was produced from 2008 until 2011. Uh, Tesla only produced about 2,500 units for global production. Uh, and about 1,500 of those were for North America. Uh, 200 for Canada and 1300 for the US. The last production Roadster uh, ends in the bin number 001464 and the last five Roadsters ever made were called the Final Five Edition. Uh, special paint, special stripes, special interior actually very similar to this and um, a $200,000 MSRP. Um, but no difference in terms of Roadster Sport performance, 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds, um, carbon fiber body, 53 kilowatt hour battery pack, 245 mile range. Wanted to walk you through some of the interior of the Roadster because uh, we noticed uh, in online that there's not a lot of resources for Roadster operation. Um, I started at Tesla in 2009 as one of the first employees at the company in sales and marketing. Uh, my employee number was 126 when I left two years ago. And uh, I have accumulated probably something on the order of 30,000 miles behind the wheel of several roadsters during my tenure there. Uh, and I sold about 65 cars uh, from 2009 to 2011 before moving on to Model S. So. Uh, walk you through the interior here. So here you have what's called the VDS, the Vehicle Display Screen. And uh, it gives you information about charging, service, uh, and other parameters of the car. So let's go in here. Uh, so the first screen uh, shows us charging, clock, drive screens, and tire monitor. The second screen is a security pin uh, which uh, would allow you to lock out the car unless you knew the pin, uh, setting the key fob, uh, programming a garage door for home link, and if you are our Canadian friends up north above the border, switching to kilometers and Celsius. And then here, uh, calibrating the touchscreen, putting the car in tow mode. Uh, GSM is for um, connecting to the car, I'm sorry, like almost GPS, if you will. And then here, if you put new tires on the car, uh, that allows you to reset the um, sensor and parameters for that. Let's go to charging. So we have the car in storage mode now. Uh, the car uh, has been sitting for a while. And if it sits for a while, you want to preserve long-term battery health, put the car in storage mode. Uh, normal daily driving, uh, one would keep the car in standard mode, and then that charges the battery to 90% and keeps a 10% reserve. Range mode opens up that 10% reserve and charges the battery fully all the way to 100%. It also air conditions the battery. It, uh, it chills the coolant and then pumps it through the pack uh, to keep it at a lower temperature uh, for longer range. Performance mode actually charges the battery to 100% but allows the battery to get warmer uh, similar to Model S and X today with Ludacris Plus where it heats the battery um, higher performance comes out of this car if the battery is warmed up in, in uh, higher temperature that of course as you can see decreases long-term battery life if one were to fully charge a Roadster every day uh, for several weeks and months and years that would lower the life of the battery and result in a need for battery replacement sooner. Timing allows you to charge the vehicle when you plug it in or charge at a specific time uh, at night if you have lower off-peak pricing as it shows there. Here you can uh, limit the amperage. Uh, some cases the roadster will try to pull too many amps and then blow a breaker and this allows you to lower how many amps the car is trying to pull so that you do not trip the breaker. Then the cost is going to be cost per kilowatt. Uh, there, that allows um, the car to tell you how much it costs to top off on a nightly basis so you can keep track of that. That's the charging screen. Clock, pretty self-explanatory. 
drive screens. Um, we'll drop the handbrake here and uh, unplug it real quick. Just by tapping on the battery bar, we're switching the modes. And then you can see here, uh, this is the standard mode. <clears throat> and so it looked like the battery increased in uh, capacity or charge level. But what happened is it um, took away the bottom 10%. So here we're only looking at 80% uh, access on the battery. When I tap this to go to max range, it unlocks the bottom 10%. And then we'll see this here open up towards the top. So if I fully charge the Roadster here, uh, that's going to show about 230, 240 miles. Uh, keep in mind this is a nine-year-old car uh, with 13, 14,000 miles on it, but the original owner really kept uh, uh, the battery in uh, perfect conditions, never really fully charging it, keeping it plugged in, and never really discharging it too much. Uh, going back to the drive screens though, I'll switch this back to standard mode. When you go left or right, this is where you see the different drive screens. And this is an energy meter. This is showing big peaks of acceleration, and then the downward graph is uh, regenerative braking. Um, so if we switch this to 30 mile span, this is showing our average watt hour per mile over 30 uh, miles. And uh, the last time uh, this was reset, uh, less than 30 miles ago because we had the car serviced at Tesla and whenever they do the annual service they reset this meter but the average watt hour per mile uh, is essentially your equivalent to MPG and the lower watt hour per mile you have the longer distance you will drive. Uh, trip meter so this is just showing total distance driven how much time has uh, been elapsed driving and the net energy and then while you're driving with this screen on, you'll get instant torque, instant horsepower, and instant g-forces. It's pretty fun. It's almost a party trick screen. Back to the clock. This little home button here is for home link. And this is real-time temperature of the motor, power electronics, and battery. Here you've got your Prindle, park, reverse, neutral, drive. So that's reverse, and then this, this is the Roadster 2.5. The backup camera has come on showing me what's behind me. I can put it into drive and then park. You hear the parking prowl engage when that happens. That's your hazards. Down here you've got traction control button. This turns it off. Heated seats. Two levels, high and low. High being the orange, green being low, and no light for off. Old school 30 pin connector for Apple. Uh, believe it or not, this car has a cup holder for one cup <laughs> or bottle. And then here's your glove box. That sound was the uh, Alpine head unit acquiring the GPS signal, so now it knows where we are. And then here uh, you've got different settings for uh, the infotainment system. radio, change the source, that's your backup camera, you can turn it on while you're sitting, which is nice. Here you don't really have a tachometer, um, it's built into the speedo, uh, since there's one speed, uh, basically you know, one reduction gear coming out of the motor straight to the wheels, um, the, the RPM can be synced to speed. So what you see here is a maximum of 14,000 RPM at 120 miles per hour. Over here is going to be your power meter, and when you step on the accelerator, this is going to show power output, 
and then when you lift on the accelerator this will come back and if you lift all the way go into the green which is going to be regenerative braking uh, here you've got um, total uh, distance driven uh, current amps being pulled based on power uh, draw on all the accessories and as you drive your amps will increase as well as well as the power meter there and then this is saying 164 mile range based on the last 30 miles of driving and then over here you see ideal range ideal range is essentially the uh, range uh, based on EPA conditions and then here is range based on your last 30 miles of driving so uh, if you're trying to go the distance in a Roadster, uh, best case uh, scenario is to always compare those two and um, sort of deduce uh, how far you'll be able to go based on that. Pretty Spartan interior, power windows, locks, manual lights, dimmer control here. Uh, cruise control is actually right here. So if you were driving and you wanted to go cruising, engage there and it'll hold the speed. This will increase your speed, reduce your speed, and cancel is this bottom button right here. Forward for the brights, pull back to flash, your signal, just like normal. The horn is not in the middle, the horn is on the sides over here. So, there you go. And then over here is your wiper, and you would pull to wash. Um, over here you have HVAC controls, so this is your temperature, fan speed, you want to turn the AC on, you push this button right here. Recirculate. Glove box again. Uh, rear view mirror is manual. And then if you want to put a CD player, what's, I'm sorry, if you want to put a CD in, what's a CD? Press and hold this. Uh, let's open that. The CD goes behind the screen. It does have Bluetooth. The passenger seat does not move, it is fixed. The owner's manual is under the seat here. You pull this out. Tight quarters, but yeah, this is owner's manual, all the info on the car. That slides into a little pocket under the seat here. I'll show you the outside. Manual charge board on the Roadster. Lights up in uh, white light to see what you're doing. Here is the Roadster connector. Larger four pin connection. Uh, not like anything you see on the Tesla S X or 3 today. Um, you essentially have to line up this pin here, if this is rotated, to that there and get in there so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And then it rotates in like that until it clicks. Push that forward. Blue means it's communicating with the power electronics in the back here, which I'll show you in just a second. You'll hear some clicking. Contactors are opening, and then the charge will begin. So the flashing means the charging has been activated. Here is the rear of the Roadster. Uh, every Roadster was made with a soft top which folds up into the trunk here. And then underneath uh, is the soft top bag and then that is your 240 volt uh, mobile connector giving you higher power charging versus standard 110 volt right there. This box right here is the battery pack. It contains 11 sheets. Each sheet has somewhere on the order of about 800 plus cells. And the total number of cells in the pack is 600, 800, and, I'm sorry, 6,831. This is the PEN, also known as the Power Electronics Module. And this is technically your onboard charger. The brain of the car handles the charging 
in and out of the pack, taking alternating current and converting it to DC. That's why you see those high voltage wires there. Some of you are probably wondering, what is this bottle here? Uh, the Roadster battery pack and all battery packs in Teslas is liquid cooled. And there's a little pump that circulates this fluid through the pack to maintain the temperature at all times. Roadster was made out of carbon fiber composite. So you can see kind of the weave here up close. The first Roadsters were all carbon fiber, including the bumpers and the front hood. And uh, throughout the years, uh, they've reduced the amount of carbon fiber they use to lower the price of the car and stay alive as a company. And um, take you to the front and show you that. To close the rear hatch, there's two latches on each side. If you don't slam it down in the middle, you push gently on each side. So you latch and appear click. Quick note on charging. I was talking to somebody the other day and they thought this meant caution. This is actually good. Yellow flashing on the Roadster is okay. It doesn't turn green until the uh, vehicle's battery is fully charged. If it's red, there's a charging fault. Super lightweight hood, opens up backwards. Here you have your air conditioning, condenser fans, uh, some more electronics, power brake booster, and brake fluid. And this is the emergency cut for uh, emergency first responders. Not too much to see under here. Washer fluid. And then this is a hood prop. Somebody was at a car show and they wanted to keep this open. Put that there, prevents it from flying down and slamming. Just set this down, two latches on each side, just like the rear. Pretty simple. These mirrors are not powered, they're manually adjustable, just like the Lotus. Door handles right there, electronically release. This is a really cool car and uh, destined to become a collector's item here in the near future.